Hey, what is up guys? Marcy here, back to do another video, and today I've got a game on Tyburn Rift once again. This is a map I like to play pretty often. It is a cool map. Uh, it's a variant of the all-time favorite tournament rift map, though nowadays players don't play it nearly as much because Spike Poker has been out of fashion for quite a while. No one likes finding over two spikes. In fact, the moment random became the best faction, the most popular faction, players stopped picking Vanilla Dust Bowl and Tournament Rift. Because if you don't know your opponent's fashion, you could lose an engineer at the start of the game and that would res result in a quick loss, which no one really liked. Anyways, this is just a VOD in the midweek. I thought I'd bring some content playing as Zocom. My opponent will be playing as the Black Hand. Not a good matchup for Zocom traditionally, but in 1.2 plus R22, things are a little better compared to before. Now, Zocom still maintain the same arsenal as they have always had. This is not like 1.03 or mods such as One Vision where units and upgrades and everything is different. No, this this maintains the vanilla design. 1.2 plus R22 uh, has maintained the vanilla design for the most part. The only thing that did change was with Steel Talons getting the uh, EMP grenades, though I don't believe that is even necessary nowadays, if I'm honest with you. That was to combat the Hex Lame uh, pff, about 10 years ago. But since Hex Lame is no longer as oppressive as it once was, yeah, even that isn't required. But I'm maintaining it in the patch because I did make an EMP. I did add the EMP grenade model to the command post, and that took <laughs> some time to implement. So, my opponent's heading out for an expansion. Same thing for me. Nothing out of the ordinary just yet. Versus Black Hand is imperative to scout in case they're going for a Reckoner or Flame Tank. Reckoners are a bit more threatening now. They do have that speed once again that they used to have. Very powerful unit. In that tournament arena game that I posted a week ago, you guys saw just how effective Reckoners can be with Micro. I was able to uh, dodge those pit bulls and evac the rockets and even get some damage dealt on my opponent's units. Scout gets cleaned up. I wasn't able to dig a foxhole. At this point, players, especially the Russian-speaking players, would like to go for the blue type room field super early. I don't tend to contest it. But I did go for it after my fifth harvester. And since I've already got five harvesters on my first Tiberium field, I should micro this harvester back to my expansion. Since as you see on my expansion, there's only a singular harvester there. Ideally, you want to have two or three harvesters per refinery. That one harvester in the bottom field is not enough to saturate that refinery. So I'm going to uh, have to do a bit of micro to uh, get the most out of this. People, just to do a bit of recon in case he's going for two war factory. Also, you never know. There could be reckoners. There could be flame tanks. It is black hand after all. I like to go for double shrine myself. Whenever I'm going double shrine, I get the purifying flame from the first shrine. And then the second shrine, I upgrade black disciples. So I can go for both infantry with black disciples and flame tanks. And when that purifying flame comes online, I'll be able to get that DPS bonus from the flame tanks as well as the imp. And to make up for the flame tanks with purifying flame being fixed, the DPS was bugged in the base game. I did add it to the redeemer as well as decrease the cost. But the upgrade duration is still the same at a minute 30. Just costs $500 less. Which is actually the correct upgrade to cost ratio. In this game, you pay $500 for every 30 seconds that elapses, or 15 seconds, 15 or 30 seconds. It's been a while since I've done modding, guys. I've been quite busy in real life, but uh, it is consistent with other upgrades, is what I'm trying to say, when it's 2,500. 
So I'm just doing a bit of recon with these pits. I see a bunch of bikes there, so I don't want to engage that. If I can keep these alive, that is going to be for the best. Transitioning into hammerheads. This is a sad strategy that I rarely do. What came to mind in this game was I played Technique in 2014. I did a strategy on a similar map. I think it was a variant of this map, Tiberium Rift. But it was a nighttime version of it. I did Shatterers and Zocom Hammerheads. And Technique struggled to stop it. So I thought, hey, what if I did this in 2024? Is it still as good as it once was? Probably is going to be great, you know, because the zone shatterers have their cost reduced to $1,500. Base game shatterers for Zocom cost $1,600. You pay an extra $100 for the ability. The shatterer has the same stats as the GDI one, except you're paying more for the ability, which I found to be stranger playing a faction that specializes and has teched out on zone shatterer imp and stuff like that and you yet you pay a premium to utilize their micro intensive abilities i found that to not make sense 15 dollars for the zone shatter is appropriate and i'm heading across the map with them hope to get some damage dealt now these bikes without tip core aren't particularly strong versus aircraft but i did just see the model on those bikes he now has the upgrade so yeah i'm going to be taking losses um Miraculously, none of the hammerheads falls, and I was able to deploy a combat support airfield at my expansion. They're only $500. I mentioned this a lot in my videos, but they're definitely worth it at the asking price. And I'm using that ever so powerful zone shatter ability, as mentioned prior. But it does take micro. You have to anticipate where your units are going to go, because there is a pre attack delay. Harvesters will be forced to pull back because he has infiltrated my base and I am not harvesting any longer. But in the meantime, he's taking a lot of damage with those Shatterers being ever so powerful against infrastructure. Those war factories and refineries are going to fall pretty quickly. Though, to be fair, the same could be said about my base. I've lost both my refineries on my expansion. I'm in a bad situation at this point. Infantry are now out to deal with the Shatterers. Now, the Black Disciple members are going to be able to tank a ton of that Shatterer damage because the Black Hand members have so much cannon damage resistance, which is what the Shatterers inflict. So even though those Shatterers are great versus the Rockets, uh, they're not going to be great at all versus the remaining zone... Uh, sorry, the remaining... A black disciples hammerheads versus typical bikes never a good day for the hammerhead but if it's just only bikes and no buggies then you can trade pretty effectively micro can get a lot of mileage from units such as the hammerhead now I need to consider my options here I need to go for an ex his base and take that out because the longer this game goes the worse I'm going to be off now despite me taking my third he has uh, no need to because I have only one base that I'm harvesting from and once again here I'm going to use the zone shatterers overload beam and look at the damage the range is insane as well that deals extra damage not only can you get an extra shot off before your Shatterer dies, but it deals more damage. It's very effective when used. Need to rebuild some of my Hammerheads. My Hammerhead count has been reduced lately. I did take out the expansion, which will stall the third base of his. Going back for more Hammerheads. I need to set up another refinery on my second in case I lose this base here, which is a possibility, he could send an MCV towards me. Deploy tip core SAM turrets with quad turrets. I would not be able to respond to that effectively. A couple of riflemans that I have from sold off structures. I thought, hey, let's just put them inside of the hammerheads. Why not, right? Even though it is minimal, the DPS, it still hit scan damage like the hammerhead. And it's not going to overkill. It's going to 
allow me to deal with infantry and lightly armored units such as bikes a little bit better. Purifiers and bikes though are now out. I'm going to move into the bikes with the hammerheads though. I have to be careful that I don't sack them. Can't afford to make any mistakes in this matchup. And now I'm microing the hammerheads back anticipating the hammerhead which he will target. And as a result, I've only lost a singular unit there in the process. Purifiers are out. He set up an expansion with his MCV. I'm looking to put pressure on him. So instead of refineries, he's forced to build units and base defenses. Tier 3 finally is out for me. I need to focus on getting that Marv. Because I don't have juggernauts. I don't have railguns. I can go for firehawks at this point to siege his base. It only takes five Firehawks now to destroy a fenced enemy tech lab. So that's a viable tactic. Plus there's no stealth tanks to worry about because it's black hand. But I've rebuilt a lot of Shatterers and Predator tanks and I'm moving into his, his main and I don't know if he's going to be able to stop this. That is a lot of units. Summoning in those sniper teams as well, just to deal with the Black Disciples. Orca Strike gets summoned in. And I have a problem as well to contend with. I don't know how I'm going to deal with these purifiers and infantry. There's even bikes there to support. I throw down an armory and my first reaction upon seeing that infantry was to go for the most specialized anti-infantry unit in the game for GDI, which is the Commando. I can even upgrade the Tiberium fill suits while I'm at it. But I got those hammerheads. And I'm kiting around the place. He's set up an expansion. I'm going to lose my main. He's lost his main. And I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with those purifiers with the hammerheads well out of position. My main and expansion will be taken out. There's a blue tip house there. You can see it has been taking blue tip. That's a little detail I added in 1.2 plus quite a while ago at this point. Plus, uh, as you've seen in a number of my videos, the Marv has a unique skin on it. When using the 4K mod alternate version, I do prefer this version to the standard one, though that is just personal preference. As always, um, the links for that are in the video description. Marv, though, will respond to this force. Sniper teams getting work done on that infantry, but not before being burnt down by those purifiers. Sadly, I lost the snipers, and I don't have anything aside from this Marv, which does have a sniper inside of it. So a lot of people may ask, why don't you see snipers and rifles inside of epic units? And that is a good question. Sometimes the situation makes sense for you to do that. Sometimes it doesn't. In this case... It makes a lot of sense. And look at this Orca Strike because the airfield was located not far away. The uh, spawn was just where the bikes were. That is something you can do. You can manipulate where the Orca Strikes will spawn in on the map. It's going to be the first airfield that you've built. So if you've got more than one airfield, you have to power down the ones that you have around the map and the orca strike will spawn from the nearest one so a lot of techniques happening here i'm showcasing what you can do with hammerhead micro what you can accomplish with zone shatterers with the overload beam and even a, some tips and tricks on airfield placement so you can use the orca strike more reliably so now I'm going to build this commando and those shatterers in his expansion cleaned up everything. I'm going to take these purifiers as well while I'm at it. Black and player decides to move in his MCV to deploy those shredder turrets, to deploy those double A turrets. But if he's building SAMs, he's not going to be building obelisks, which is what he'll be needing soon to contend with this Marv. And now my commando comes out and without the cabals, this commando is going to lay waste on the remaining rocket squads. There is simply nothing that these rockets can do 
against the GDI Commando with its uh, carbine rifle. Seems to be heading towards my commando, which obviously is a big mistake. He can fence the MCV, but all I'd have to do is uh, DPS it down to 66% health to relinquish that fence. But it doesn't matter anyways, because I see Ford directly on top of that construction yard. You can use the jump jet directly on your opponent's buildings and the commando will destroy it once it lands after jumping so yeah that was a showcase of Zocom's strength with shatterers with hammerheads and ultimately at the end there you saw the commando at work with the marv sniper team in the marv i was able to deal with the bikes and the infantry as well so yeah that was a game that showcased what you can do with Zocom, even in a poor matchup such as this it's about strategy it's about planning it's about uh, denying your opponent their expansion as well. You want to uh, maintain an advantage if you can in this matchup, but it's not. Or, or there is hope. Obviously, you can't fight it in a symmetrical way. Uh, that's what I like about the sub factions. Each of them plays to their strengths, and it's no different for Zocom. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, smash the like button. I really appreciate that. And before I go, I'd like to thank all my Patreon members for the awesome support on my channel. Anyways, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.